Hi ho guys, today we're going to talk about some parallel compression as well as the bus processing. If you haven't checked out the past videos where we are going over the kick drum, snare drum, rooms and overheads, make sure to check that out. So what we will start with today is the first parallel compression and this is called the parallel compression sustain. Okay, so for that I will be using the FET compressor from Softube. And what is routed to this is the kick, snare, overheads, as well as the room mono and the room stereo bus. And the idea behind this uh, compression is to give the drums more sustain instead of punch. To kind of make it a little bit bigger sounding and have, as I said, more sustain. So I have a part here where we're going to solo into the drums and tweak this to we'll get that sustained nice sound. So what I'm doing is just trying to find that nice sustain like sweet spot of the compressor. Okay, so we went for a fast release, and the attack isn't as fast as the, re as the release, but it's still quite fast. The ratio is 10, and since we drove the input by 19, I dragged back the output by 3. And then I added a low pass filter, so we could take out some of that low end, around 85 to 90. As you heard, it gave the, the drums a more sustained tone to it instead of tight and punchy. So with the rest of the drums. So what we got was bigger sounding drums with more sustained and a fuller sound. Okay, so next on the chain is the sledgehammer. This is the key ingredient to kind of get the punchy and tight drum sound. So what we will begin with is a transient designer. And I'm going to use a DF Trance here. And this is to kind of give the drums more attack and to make them a little bit more tight sounding. So I'm beginning with the attack to bring out some of that transient into the drums. So now we have a nice amount of attack. So next up is going to be the sustain knob. And we're going to use this to just bring down the sustain a little bit and make them a little bit more tighter. So now we got it where we want, and as you can could hear, when there was fast kick parts, the snare kind of disappeared. But that's totally fine because we want the snare to be more impactful on the like more slower beat parts. 
So next off is an EQ and we're only going to need to use the low and high in bell mode and this is to kind of give some more focus on the low end punch as well as the presence. Just to kind of give a little bit more excitement to the parallel compression and to enhance the high and low end. If you would have more of the parallel compression, it would give more presence and less it would give a more fuller sound. Next up is compression and we're using the Disto from SK Note. That is a, I think it's a distressor emulation plugin. And what I do now is to kind of match the level that was before adding the compressor. Okay, so I went for a slow attack and a fast release and a 4 to 1 ratio and I drove it to around 90 and the output is at 25. So um, I kind of use this plugin when I want the drums to be a little bit more snappy and have a more aggressive tone to it. If I would were to be having a little bit more softer compression, I would be using something like SSL Comp. And the average uh, like gain reduction usually happen around this area with uh, maybe 7 to 11 in uh, gain reduction. And that, that's basically what I use on all compressors. So try and maybe emulate this with another and see what happens. So here's the drums with and without the sledgehammer. And here's the mix with and without both of the parallel compressors. Okay, so now we're going to go over the drum group processing as well as the drum bus processing. So I'm starting off with an EQ and this is a EQ curve I got from Nolly's uh, creative live class. Basically adds more high end and makes a control low end thump to kind of tighten it up and gives more punch. Here's the EQ curve with uh, on and off with the drums. As you hear, it gives a really nice amount of excitement to the overall drum sound. And I tend to use this preset as a starting point on my drum bus. And it's boosting around 110 for 2.3 decibels. And then cutting off at 33 Hz. Then it's boosting at 10k for 5.8 dB. And then 5.5k for around 3 dB. Next up is a compressor and this is used to kind of just tighten up the kit just a little bit and make it sound more like a full kit.
It makes the kit glue together a little bit more instead of sounding like several pieces of a kit. And there's a threshold of minus 10, a ratio at 3, attack on 7, and a fast release. I also drive it 2.5, no, 2.6. So next up we have the Revival and the Virtual Mix Bus from Slate. This one is kind of to just give some excitement to the low and the high end. And this is to kind of give some nice console saturation to the overall drum sound. It doesn't really add a ton, but it kind of just add that little extra to the sound. Finally, we have Finality. This kind of works like a light compress, uh, bus compressor, and I also use it for its coloration. I tend to use this as a volume knob, but that comes more on the drum bus. This is for minus four. Minus 5 and I use the color and aggro. On the drum bus I start off with the virtual mix bus. This is also to give it some console saturation and due to the Brit end setting it will add some more low end. It also gives that extra weight to the snare. Next up is DFX Sight. Okay, so this one is used in parallel mode on the American setting, as well as drum group slash drum room. And the treble is boosted at zero, high mid one, low mid one, and bass one. And this is to give some nice extra excitement to the overall drum sound. As you hear, it also brings out the snare in the drum kit a little bit more and to it gives a nice character to the snare to punch through the rest of the drums. So next up we have a SSL comp and this is to kind of bring the whole kit together since we have a, the parallel compression and the two reverbs out of the drum, drum group. We kind of bring that all together to one. And I'm going for a fast release, slow attack, threshold at 6, and a ratio at 4. And it hovers around... It hovers around 2 to 3 in gain reduction. Next up, and finally, we have the finality advanced again, with the color and aggro. And this is also used as a light bus compressing, but it's not the purpose of the limiter here but it turns out to be that anyway depending on the way I use it but it's mainly like a, a way for me to keep my gain staging as you see I have some of these pretty low but I usually kind of have them around here and then I use buses so I have a peak that is um, consistent so I can keep track on where everything lies around instead of having like a peak that goes maybe plus three, plus two, plus five, minus five. So I have them at a consistent level so I can see where everything lies within the mix. So I can kind of base everything around that peak level. And due to how I mix, a lot of my buses tend to hover around the same peak level. So that is a way to kind of just make it easier for me to visualize and kind of have a starting point on where everything lies around. As you see, it doesn't get past minus 8.6, and when I turn this off, it'll get really loud. So 
So as you see, it works kind of like a bus compression, but it's mostly for the coloration. And then to gain stage and use this as a level knob instead of it, because I don't use the bus knob, I use uh, this one to set the level. Thank you for watching. This was the final video in this series. Make sure to check out the past videos where we are going over the kick, snare, rooms and overheads. Make sure to like this video and subscribe because in the next series it will be featuring a rock pop song. So stay tuned and thank you for watching and see you next time.